Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Today we're talking to Tom from Smoked Face Grillers. So bit of a trigger warning on this one. Um, Tom went through an experience that wasn't very nice at all. Um, it was a very difficult thing and he's grown as a person off the back of it. And what a lot of what we talk about is dealing with some mental health issues and having to go through a period that's really tough and how you can group together. Um, also, there's a little bit of swearing in this episode. So if there's little ears around, maybe don't listen to it in front of them. But from what we're talking about, it's important. I leave it in. But, you know, Tom, at the same time, has a fantastic Instagram account, Smokeface Gorilla, has some great cooks on there, and he's won some competitions because of how good he is at it. But Tom can tell you all about that. So without much further ado, here's Tom. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. It's just me today because Owen's been bogged down with work stuff and family stuff and everything. And I sound a bit funky because I've got a bit of a cold, but we crack on with things, don't we? But for anyone who might not know who you are, please do introduce yourself and tell everyone on the podcast exactly what you're about. So my name's Tom. I'm Smokeface Gorilla. I've uh, been on the Instagram for a little over a year now. It was me barbecue birthday about two weeks ago, which is quite funny because I posted it was my birthday on Instagram and everyone was sending me dead nice happy birthday messages. <laughs> You'll take that. Up. Take yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I just like showcasing the food that I cook at home, the food that I cook for everyone around me to make me happy. And I'm very open about how barbecue as being a healing process for me. So I think that's what's helped the page take off as well as it has done in those 12 months. It's one of those things that we've talked about quite a bit on the podcast, how much getting outside can help, getting involved in that sort of thing, and also the community that has come up from all the barbecuing, which has been fantastic. So, well, what has that really meant to you after all of the different things that everyone and yourself has been through over the last few years? Well, I think lockdown affected everyone, and that's where barbecue seems like shoot up. And I... I'd always been a fan of barbecue from going, I've got a cousin who's in South Africa, uh, went over to visit him a few times, so I learned about the braai life over there, and it gripped me, so I used to barbecue over here, and then during lockdown, my missus very generously bought me a Kamado Joe, because I was buying crappy old barbecues and being cute, they were getting rusted out because I went looking at them, so I was buying a new barbecue every summer and my missus was like, right, it's a good one, look after it, take care of it. So that gave me something to do. I was dead intimidated by it though. Like it mm -hmm. sat in the kitchen for like three months before I even lit it because I was like, I need to learn about this bad boy before I ruin it. So during lockdown, kept me occupied, kept me happy. And then in May of last year, we had a really bad house fire. Um, we were asleep on the first floor and the downstairs kitchen was completely ablaze and smoke completely engulfed the house. We Jesus. woke up to we woke up to me missus thinking that her eldest daughter who slept on the floor above, we thought that the fire come from her room. And luckily the baby was in bed with us that night because me missus opened the door, the whole bedroom got engulfed in smoke. We shouted up to a daughter because we thought it was a candle in her bedroom that caused it because it was just black everywhere. So we got out, we had to climb up the bedroom window and the whole downstairs was completely ripped off with fire. So that affected me mental health really badly. I got um, diagnosed with, I think it was like level three PTSD, like measured in levels. And I had like the same level as someone, a soldier who had been to war. I was having nightmares. I could smell fire. Like, my missus had some lilies out the front by the front door and the smell of the pollen smelled a bit like fire to me and it was making me panic so we had to throw the flowers out and I was going through therapy quite a lot and at the time, strangely enough, that lighting the fire and cooking food over it was good therapy for me. It, the incident completely stripped me of my personality. The only time when I was happy and back to myself was when I was cooking food. So I'd done a few like little barbecue step-by-steps on my personal Instagram and everyone was messaging me like, 
you need to do this, you need to make a dedicated one, you need to go all out on this. And I was umming and ahhing, and then it was Laura who was like, look, you've got a talent here, I know that you don't want to put yourself out there, but I really think you should, and she pushed me, so I went and done it, and the more I cooked over the barbecue, the better I felt. And it ended up being, I spoke to my therapist about it, and we agreed that fire made me lose all control that, that day. I lost everything, lost control of my emotions, I lost control of the actual incident. But when I'm cooking on a barbecue and I'm cooking over fire, I'm controlling that uncontrollable item, if you get what I mean. I'm controlling the fire, and it makes me feel like I'm getting one over it. So every time I was lighting up the barbecue, I was feeling better about myself. I was feeling better about the situation. And overall, the amount of support that we had after the fire, the support I had from my partner and my family, and the support once a launch smoke face gorilla, it just made me feel like me again. Like I'm back out there talking to people online. It's been unbelievable. Like the barbecue community have helped me out so, so much. I always say like when, I do little shout outs, people don't realise how much they help me, but there are times, especially early on, when I didn't speak to any friends or any and didn't want to speak to anyone who was a recluse. I only felt safe when I was with Laura and the baby Blake and my brother or someone. But now because of the barbecue community, I'm feeling more like myself and feeling more out there. I can talk more out there, even if it's just through my phone when I'm doing posts or even like chatting to you now. I look back to 14, 15 months ago and I'm a completely different person to when I was just scared to put anything out there. It's um, it's such a sad, sad story, everything that you've been through. But to see where you are now, to see what you're producing on Instagram and some of the things that you've done and have achieved, which we'll talk about as well through the barbecue community, but also to see how everyone has come together for yourself but also everyone else in the community is, is an amazing thing to see and as i've said we've talked about on the podcast a few times before about mental health but it's amazing what getting outside controlling that aspect of cooking of fire and everything but also how it brings people together could really help these things but you're a fantastic ambassador for all of that and what it can do you must feel proud of where you are now and some of the things you've done um do you know what, mate? Honestly, it didn't really like hit me until I was speaking to like the lads from Q together. Like, mm. I speak to Dan near enough every day, Dom and Tom are two boss lads. And when I was speaking to them, I fit Sizzle Fest. And like, I'd, I'd be aligned straight for them as soon as we got there anyway, because like I said, I speak to Dan all the time. And but the three of them, and it's the first time I got to meet Russ as well. And obviously, James the Butcher was there. So I was chatting to all them, and it was like Dom who was saying, like, it's like you embody what we're trying to do and we're so happy that you're like part of this and like friends with us, it's really boss. And then I was like, I had a few drinks and I just sat back and I was like, so what, I am actually quite proud of what I've done. I never would have been able to do it without the support of Laura and like my brother Wilson and Laura's kids, everyone who pushes me to do stuff like that. And then every time I've done a post, the support that everyone gave me was just like, that's insane. So I like to replicate that now. I love highlighting other people's cooks, whether I'm just sharing it on my stories, if I'm giving someone a shout out. I just think it's good to see in a community where there's so many people, everyone likes to see someone else win. There's, there's little bits of jealousy here and there, you can see that, but most of all, if one of us in the community is winning, we're all winning. And you do get that feel when you speak to people about it. And that's what makes me proud mostly to be counted as a big part of the community that's what i'm most proud of the world and, and some of the things that you, you're very humble in the fact that you just like you say you just like to barbecue you like to share other things but some of the cooks you've done are fantastic and that's why you win things things like yeah come on you're laughing now i don't need to say it so what have you what have you been winning with some of the cooks you've been doing come on tell us so this year it was officially called my double champ year. It was champ champ. Um, <laughs> and so it's funny, I was looking back at old stories that I'd done and I posted about it. It was when restaurant really that was going on. And I thought, I hope I'm good enough in a couple of years' time to be able to enter these competitions. I'm going to give them a shout out now. Lee smokes here and artists both commented underneath my comments and was like, you're good enough now. 
So I was only an hour and about like what I'd do. So restaurant roulette and safe passing. And then it was the big K product steak Aubrey. And mm-hmm. I was down in Cornwall at the time. And I was in Devon at the time, sorry. And I literally said the day before the same answer, Laura, we just cooked this boss tomahawk on my mini commando. And it was it's still to this day one of my favourite steaks that I've ever cooked for Laura. She always talks about it. I was like, so what? I'm just going to cook what I enjoy cooking now instead of trying to impress people. I'm going to just cook steak. I love cooking steak. I love everything about it. And that morning, Poppy from Norfolk Smoke Pit had messaged me to say she's entered me in Big K product steak or break. <laughs> so I was like, all right, it's a, steak, it's a steak cooking competition. And when I seen everyone else who's been entered in it, I had by far the least amount of followers. I was like, do you know what? Fuck this, I'll go all out. Yeah. Uh, I like cooking steak, let's just do it. And it was it was a it was a good competition because you got to campaign. So like you can message people saying, check this out if you think from where we vote for it, you can post it on your stories, you can remind people to vote. And I got a buy through the first round and the second round I come up against Scott's food and he's he's a good lad. Like, I ended up becoming mates with everyone else who entered the competition. Like but I said to him, I was like I didn't want to face you until the final ever could help because Scott's a really good cook. And <laughs> it was it was insane. Like there was like six hundred, seven hundred comments on that vote. And wow. I beat I beaten to it and I was like, that's mad. So then in the final I was up against barbecue stew and he's another really, really, really sound lad who does loads for the community and I was like it just happened to be at a really stressful time because I was foolish enough to enter Mass Grilla at the same time running alongside Steak OP. <laughs> I had I had some Mass Grilla with not expecting to get anywhere. Mass Grilla was actually the competition that introduced me to the barbecue community. Mm-hmm. I was um when I was researching for me Camado, I come across Alton's Barbecue World and the scene that it was going on and I followed mm-hmm. it and then Lee posted the accounts from everyone who went and so I followed everyone on that list and that so I got involved in the community. So I was like, so what? I'm um, in an iron and weather to enter. And I think I just said that to Jay passing like tongue in cheek. And he was like, I'll put you down. So I was like, guess a minute then. And it was just going. It was, that was harder because you couldn't campaign and it was one picture. And I cook food. Like I, I know I do cook food well on the barbecue, but. I'm crap at getting the good pictures or the good light. And luckily, Laura, for where many years of baking cakes and taking photos of cakes, she's a wizard at that. So she was like, I'll help you present everything, you just cook it. And it was always a mad rush to get me pictured in on time. So, yeah, so then after I won steak or breaking, and a week later was the Masculine final. And that competition pushes you, mate. Like, Jesus Christ, it's, it's tough. Finding out on a Monday what you've got to cook. Obviously, most people work Monday to Friday. I, with, with the cakes, we work Monday to the end of Saturday. So I had to fit me cooking somewhere there, send it off to Jay. And then I tried my best to not look at my phone during the voting period. I was like, for yeah. all the other, all the way through it, up until the semi finals, I had no, I didn't think I was going to win. I was like, let's get as far as I can. Let's get as far as I can. And then when they dropped, Arthur's dropped the dessert round. I was like, I have to, I have to fucking win this now, don't I? I, I, I bake cakes for a living. It's my job. I can't have someone beat me on desserts, can I? So once I'd done that, I was like, there we go, it looks like. And then the second round after that was safe and safe. And I was like, I've got to go on to win this. So it's got to, got to do it. And it was just stress, mate. It was, it's so tough. It pushes you. It's masculine that pushes you. you. You come out of it a better, a better barbecue, undoubtedly. But it's some of the themes that they put up against you, like, I don't cook much seafood on the barbecue, but coming out of that, I think the favourite dish that I cooked besides the dessert was the seafood round. I done, like, a Caribbean curried monkfish, and it was unbelievable, and I'd never give that a go on the barbecue beforehand. Mm-hmm. But, the competition pushes you so when the one that I was I was really happy with that like, I, I wasn't expecting it and even after the vote had ended when they said right because it was close and I speak to 
Nath from Northern Grillers, I speak to her loads as well. And when it was like we're waiting there on the live, and he said we're gonna we're gonna invite the person who comes second on. And I was just like I was half expecting my phone to come up with me and like something had happened in the last minute and I've lost it. And <laughs> then when the scene when the scene it was Nath, like I was just sitting there in the kitchen just like fish pumping. I was like shit. There's loads of people in the house who need to go upstairs to do this lab. And <laughs> I swore so much, Jordan. I swear all the time. I knew it's terrible. I'm such a cocky mouth. But I swore so much. And people were commenting. Laura was commenting on the Instagram lab. Artist was. My mum even commented. People were like, stop swearing so much. Stop swearing. Because I think after every sentence I said, I was just like, fucking hell. Fucking hell. <laughs> It was not so. Yeah, it was uh, from from not expect from but in March from me saying I opened good enough to enter two comp to enter one competition to by the end of August winning two of them was insane, mate. It was more than what a lot happened this year that I never could have dreamed would happen in the first five years of doing it. Never mind the first year. It's been nuts. What I love about the Mask Gorilla as well is no one knows who's entered what. Quite often, it's like they use like different false names and things like that, so people get like aliases and things of this is what like that personality. But it means that if you've got someone who's got thirty thousand, forty thousand followers, they cannot influence the vote whatsoever. So you know that it is the best food that's making it through, which is phenomenal in itself. You talk about how it pushes pushed you. Have you found since then that you're constantly trying different things that are outside your comfort zone? Oh, mate, I was... I had major barbecue burnout, like... <laughs> and I think I got it at the worst point because it was summer, and I was just sat there, and I was like, I need someone to pop up on Instagram Live and tell me what I've got to cook because I couldn't think. My head had just gone blank. I was like... I don't know what I'm doing. So luckily, I've done an event with Laura and a bar in town. I talk about that in a bit, so I had that to keep me occupied. And then I was just like, I need to cook something. Now I need to try a few different things. So now I am. Like, one thing that it did make me want to try more is the fan of the mask girl was on a stick. So everything had to be on a stick of some form. I really want to get involved in, I wanted to do more skewered foods. So, oh, I don't know why that's just gone. You're Sorry, right. you lower back. <laughs> yeah, so I want to cook with skewers more, and luckily I've got a hell lazy yammer, so that comes with all the skewers, so play about with that. And I've just found since then, I've been cooking more for large groups of people, like I've been inviting around. I kind of got a buzz off people seeing the pictures of my food and appreciating it and loving it. So, I wanted out to see that more in person. So I've done a couple of private barbecues. I basically just put myself out there on the back of winning the competition, the confidence that I had. I was like, okay, let's do this event. I've done an event for a big food blog in, in Liverpool mm -hmm. that they have over like 80 staff members. I cooked it, catered for their summer party, done private barbecue, done the event that we done ourselves. And, I've catered for photo shoots for our friends on the company called Yeti Productions. They do all the photo shoots for Primark and stuff like that. Yeah. So I've done barbecue catering for photo shoots. It's just, it's made me be more confident within myself. And instead of second guessing what I'm cooking or how I'm cooking, it just made me go, like when I'm speaking to people, I'll go, right, this is what the menu is going to be. Da, da, da. It's going to be good. Just trust me and we'll go with it. Where this before, then that would have been having like a 20 minute consultation. And being like, Well, I'll see if I can cook this for you, I'll see if I can cook that. Like, I know my strengths and weaknesses now. If you mm -hmm. get what I mean, that's one thing that it has definitely taught me. And what tips can you give people then? Let's talk a bit more about the food. So, you've learned so much over the last kind of year. What top tips would you give people if they're either starting out in barbecue or just things they can try to elevate their skill levels? Well, one thing that I think has made me a better like barbecue is I've got a range of different barbecues. Like I've got the Kamado, I've got a mini Kamado, but then I've got a Hellraiser Yama. And one thing that's helped me is cooking on a kettle barbecue. I've got a master touch to do that. 
I be part of a barbecues and be catering events. And if you can control your temperature on a Weber kettle, you could control it on anything. So I wouldn't. A lot of people turn the nose up at the kettle. It's such a good piece of kit, and it teaches you so much. So you can learn how to cook on a Weber kettle if you eventually want to go and get a Kamado, or if you want to get like a PK or something like that, it'll be a walk in the park for you because a Weber kettle is such a versatile piece of kit and it teaches you so much. And another bit of advice is cook what you like to cook. Like when I had that realisation with Laura and I said, I'm just going to cook steaks, I'm going to cook big steaks, I love doing it. That was a game changer for me because even when I was cooking something that wasn't a steak, I was having a buzz because I was doing something different. I think a lot of people do get stuck in the rut of trying to cook to please other people. So, like, if you want to go into barbecue fails now, my my, my first fail was me second ever cook on me Camado. I tried <laughs> to do a whole brisket, invited twenty odd people round to me house, and it was like chewing on the beer and stuff. It was <laughs> terrible because the brisket's like the the holy one. It, isn't it? It's like the holy grail of barbecue. People think you always think if you're smoking meat, do a brisket. And I dived in because I thought, right, this brisket's going to be boss. I'm going to get 100 likes on Instagram. Everyone here is going to love it. I'm going to get carried around the garden like a king on the throne. <laughs> and instead, it was so, so bad. It was, I, was, I was just happy that I happened to have like two whole chickens in the fridge for some strange reason that day because I was like, I'm sure the can of beer up their arse and throw them both of them on the grill to <laughs> recover from this absolutely ruined brisket. But yeah, just that's the main one. Just learn your equipment, get used to your equipment, and cook what you like to cook. If people can see that you're enjoying cooking it and you're putting it out there, and I've I've always been dead enthusiastic when I'm posting, like when I read some of my captions now, I'm like. Oh, no, I was rambling back then, wasn't I? I just <laughs> get, I just got dead excited because I was cooking stuff that I like, so I'll, I'll just be typing away. And then, so just do that. Cook what makes you happy. Cook what makes your family happy. The people who are eating it. At the end of the day, foods made to be eaten. So, mm -hmm. cook it for the people who are eating it and make them happy. And then if the pictures come out good, they'll come out good. As long as you're happy cooking it and the people eating it are happy, that's the main thing, man. Once you do that. The barbecue community, they're not really, they're not really a fickle bunch. They'll see that you're enjoying yourself and you're putting the effort and time in, and that's what everyone appreciates. I also think that all of us as barbecuers can be very guilty of not being happy with what we've put together and what we've cooked, whereas someone who doesn't necessarily barbecue all the time or hasn't really experienced much of that type of cooking, because I'd argue the quote-unquote average British person as if we're a different breed we're not at all <laughs> but probably doesn't have that much proper barbecue food or just thinks of British barbecue typically as burnt sausages that are raw in the middle and like burgers and we can put something together that we're not happy with and it can blow their minds and the most important thing is make it's them having a good time and we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves oh mate I've done that plenty of times I've thrown wobblers loads from not being happy with how stuff turned out and don't get me wrong there's times when people have it and they've been like oh that's a bit like <laughs> iffy <laughs> but, yeah, we've, all, we've all had that as well we've, we've all had that but then the times where uh, you, you know if it's it's not up to scratch and I think we're like victims of a false standard almost like we see pictures people put up on on Instagram all the time like I'm going to shout out Charlie Boy now because he makes hot dogs look ridiculously pretty. And I made pizza dogs through the week for me and one of Laura's daughters and I was trying to get a good picture of it and I couldn't get it to look good. It was stressing me out. I was like, why is this not looking good in a picture? It looks so good in person. But the picture wouldn't work. And I was, I was like, so what, I'm going to message him. And as I was like getting ready to message, I was like, this hot dog, the cheese is going to end up being like rubber in a minute because... <laughs> <laughs> it's going dead cold on the side there, and they just ate it. And I was like, "That that was that, that was decent." Looked over at Daisy, Laura's daughter, and they looked like it was about to blow off, like it was the best thing she's ever had to eat. And I was like, 
I'm I'm crying because it's going cold and I can't get a good picture. And she's just nailed this hot dog so quick and been like, that was amazing. Like they were taking photos of it, doing a big cheese pull, she had a bite of it. And like you said, we are we're, we're guilty of failing to meet standards that we only set ourselves. I'm trying to, at the moment, set myself a little bit of a rule. I've not talked about this on here, actually, but I, I've, I've done it tonight on a post that I've done for the podcast on Instagram as well. I, I did a really short, almost mini series on Instagram called 30 Second, uh, thirty Minute Cooks, because people think that, you know, if you're barbecuing with charcoal, that has to take forever. So I was like, right, I'm going to do a number of cooks that's literally 30 minutes from me lighting a... Uh, like natural fire lighter and stick in like the actual chimney starter over the top of it to eating nothing in between just stuff that you can cook literally in half an hour to prove that if you get home at six o'clock seven o'clock at night it's just as quick as sticking the oven on and putting something in the oven so i did a few of those cooks and i was kind of learning that spending half an hour trying to get a perfect photo for instagram because the other rule I have is I never put filters on things. If it, if what it looks like on the pictures I put on is what it looks like. If I'm spending that long taking the photo and it means I'm not going to enjoy the food, I'm missing the point. So I'm yeah. trying to give myself a five minute window of I've got five minutes to take the photo. If I'm not happy with what it is, it's going up or it's not getting posted. I don't care. I'm going to enjoy the food and spend time with the family. And I actually think that's improved my relationship with barbecue since I've been doing that for the last six or seven weeks because you can get so frustrated with I can see this looks good it smells amazing I know it's going to be good but I can't get the picture I want and by the time I have I've ruined the experience for me that, that's it mate it's I am the worst person with technology and phones so <laughs> whenever I try to massively edit or filter a picture, it just comes out not unlike any and it looks dark and burnt and everything. So I manage just always a battle with lighting and angles and I'm doing this, that and you're doing like you said. It was only based when you realise that you spend so much time cooking something, even if it is half an hour, you've put half an hour of time, effort, money for your charcoal and everything, and you are sacrificing the end product of that. Mm -hmm. to have a picture that people who aren't even going to eat it just so they can click a love heart on the screen and they can be like go you that looks nice and then you can if you were being honest to yourself you could come in from beef it looks really good on the picture but it was ice cold and everything was clogged up by the time i took mm -hmm. 45 minutes to get a picture of it so you're right I me mean, that's a fucking boss reel that you've got there and i do i know i don't think i've i don't think i've posted the Outside of Butcher versus Beast, I don't think I've put a food picture up for like two months mm -hmm. purely because I've been enjoying eating it. I posted my stories as I'm cooking it and I'm doing it as I'm going along. But most of the stuff in my Instagram page, I don't even know whether I can call it a barbecue Instagram because it's just me being a tit on the Instagram page <laughs> now. <laughs> well, that, that's good though. That's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. We joked before we started actually getting into the pod that I had this long list of stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. And nicely, you've been working your way through it without even knowing it, which is great. <laughs> but um, one of the things I did want to talk about is the personality behind the page because that comes off the screen. Even in just the pictures that you've taken of the food, the the fun and the cheeky aspect of it comes out even if you just put a shot of tacos for example um that you've been doing recently and also you can tell from like the charitable work that you've done and talked about on the page as well that it's full of trying like championing fun championing kind of positivity is that a conscious decision or is that just part of what comes naturally to you? You know what, it's something that I, I've always been an overgrown child anyway. <laughs> I've, I've always been, I have got the classic middle child syndrome. I, I'm the second of four brothers, so, and my youngest brother's 16 years younger than me, so for a lot of the time I was the middle of three. And I have always just had that attention seeking middle child syndrome. I've always been loud, I've always been the first one to try and impress people at a party have just never been shy. And then after the fire, I can say they completely stripped me of my personality. And because barbecuing started making me feel more like myself, I felt like I could put my personality out there a bit more. And one of the things that I was seeing that 
a lot of stuff on. In my head, I was like, I'm not as good as cook as the rest of this barbecue community. I'm looking at everyone's pictures like, I can't cook as good as them. I can't make my food look as good as them. But I'm going to be me and let's see how far that takes me. And Laura has run a cake business for 12 years now and she has never been shy about putting herself out there, speaking her mind, showing her personality through her page and her business, which is what I think makes her stand out amongst other cake bakers in Liverpool. So I kind of like used what I wanted. I used that influence of seeing how Laura done it with their business and then they used it as a way for me to claim back my personality and put it together. And then the more fun I was having as I was barbecuing, like I was saying before, the ramblings I'll be doing as I'm typing out the caption and I'll be looking at it and I'll be like, I've tried to write half a rap song there. What am I doing? And then... <laughs> When I do stuff where I Photoshop people's heads over like rap albums and stuff, that's just it made me laugh at the time. And I just think of stuff and I think if that makes me laugh, I'll put out there and see if it makes everyone else laugh. Like when I bake in the kitchen, I wear a hairnet. So I posted the Instagram story of me dancing to Russia the other day. And then next minute, Poppy from Norfolk Smoke Pit and Jay from Alton's Barbecue World are putting reels of them air humping triggers. Yeah. I'm going to be in it saying spread the positivity. I'm like, I was dancing in the hair now. You used to have gone all out there. We've got Poppy, <laughs> Poppy and Crocs and a winter coat and Jay's cowboy saddle and a trigger. I was like, I don't have a barbecue stable enough for me to straddle that. So, <laughs> and she just like ran with it. So I just, I just like making people laugh. I, I like me I like making myself laugh, basically. So a lot of the time I do stuff to entertain myself. Mm. I, I think like a great example of this, if you're driving, don't necessarily do this, but if you're listening at home, pour, I'm giving you permission to pause this podcast now, but go and look at one of I think it was probably two or three video reels ago that you put up of the Butcher versus Beast challenge with how excited you were. And even the, the picture, uh, people will be able to tell just looking through your reels, the excited, happy face. Um, I think it was one of the ones, not a spoiler for the series, but it was one of the first ones that you'd won, that you put the yeah. <laughs> and just The pure joy. And it, it, it's fantastic. It puts a smile on your face. It teaches you about cooking. And um, it's just happy and exciting, which is what people want when they are scrolling aimlessly through Instagram. I think that it's a great thing that's brought this barbecue community together, but Instagram to a certain extent is kind of the devil. Is that okay oh, for me to say? Oh, mate, it's evil, isn't it? It just seems <laughs> to be like it just fucks with your head now, like the amount that people like I I've been like at times where I'm like this Real isn't doing this, but I can't be honest with you. The last barbecue versus beef reel that I've done was the beef song. When I made that, I was in hysterics laughing at it. <laughs> so Laura, she was crying, sent it to Butcher Fallow. He was like, that's the best one you've done. Posted it. Mate, it's got like a third of the views as any other reel I've done before. Out of interest and, got... and not to get geeky on Instagram, how long ago did you put it up? Um, about two weeks ago. So Instagram have got this weird thing where they've messed with the algorithm now where reels can take two or three weeks to even just explode. So it doesn't necessarily mean it won't get there. But this is the thing. If you're a, a content producer at all, whether you're doing it as a profession or whether you're just doing it for yourself, all of these things change and then you put something out there. It doesn't blow up in the way that other things have. You don't understand why. And it can put you into a weird negative spiral, which it doesn't need to do. At the end of the day, we're just posting things for people to enjoy. That's it. I was like, after the scene that, there was a part of me that was like, I wonder why that's done that. And then the other part of me was, I watched it back like two or three times. I was like, I can't believe I held a raw beef tongue that close to my own face just to make a fucking <laughs> stupid reel and to entertain myself. And I do I do a lot of stuff to make Laura laugh. And the beef tongue she found horrifically disgusting and she had to she had to work in the kitchen while it was poaching for seven hours. So she had to smell the beef tongue. So I was like, I need to make her laugh with this now to <laughs> make her withstand and that smell worth it. And it was like I'd be upstairs and I could hear her laugh and her head off downstairs and I'd shut down what she doing and she's watching it again. So that go, just goes back to me trying to make myself laugh and make 
the people around me laugh and hopefully other people get onto it. And thankfully, a lot of people in the barbecue community, it seems to be a community of misfits. So we all like the same thing and all laugh at the same thing, which is good. And I like, I love the idea of that series as well. So talk people through it if they haven't seen it and, and why it's different as well. So, as I said before, I had major barbecue burnout after Mass Villa. And I was just sat around. It was as we was getting towards the end of the summer. So I thought, this must be an awkward time for butchers, especially because it's not quite Christmas. So they're not getting the Christmas trade and they're not getting the barbecue trade. So I was like, I trust my butcher father. I trust him with anything when it comes to it. So I just messaged him. I was like, why don't we just do a little sort of music? Like, what have you got in mind? No, I you just send me a box once a week. Don't tell me what it is. I've got to guess it. And he was like, that sounds good. And then I was like, I can't go in blind every week. Let me ask like one question and we'll knock it off and I'll do a stupid real playing about with it. And then it only dawned on me after like we agreed to do it. I was like, I'm definitely getting sent like a fucking pig dick here, aren't I? Like, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I have set myself up here. So... We was like, Sam, we'll do it. And so you know what? He's been a star throughout it. He has sent me some really good cuts of meat. He's sent me some meat that I cuts that I never heard of that I never would have guessed. The one that you spoke up for it, I was dead happy and I guessed it. I had never heard that before. I only got that through an Instagram sponsored ad where for some random reason I scrolled through Instagram and it said five beef cuts you should get to know. And I looked at the picture on the cover went back on my phone, looked at the picture that I had taken of it, and I was like, they're the same ones. So it was just a complete fluke that I got that one. I think that's why I was so happy on the real way. You see me face time and him, and he says, I got him. You don't expect to get given that, do you? So it was just my way of showing how much trust I have in my butcher, a way for me to educate myself on different cuts of meat, and a way to tell, like, I encourage other people, have a good relationship with a butcher, even if it's one online, because there's so many top class butchers doing nationwide delivery now. Like a little plug, Butcher Faro started it this week as well. So there's so many good butchers who can deliver to your front door, message them, talk to them, ask them what they've got, ask them how they can do stuff. And it's, it's a good relationship to have if you enjoy cooking barbecue and you know you eat good quality meat. Even if you eat meat less, eat better, eat sustainable eat better quality and just have that relationship with your butcher. So I was just showing that I've got complete faith in my butcher to educate me, to feed me and to have fun. And I just wanted to see if other people wanted to give it a go. And a few people have messaged and saying that they're going to try this cut. Even one of the cooks that are fucked up massively, people have said they've never heard of it. They're going to go and have a look at it. Other butchers have been messaging me saying that this is amazing. They want to do something else with someone who they know. So, it's class, it's really done what I hoped it would do, and that's get people more open and to learn about meat and about butchery. I think also, again, going back to the whole social media thing, you're not afraid to put something up there if you've cocked it up. And that's so important because it's also part of the learning process. That's why we champion fail so much on here. I bet you learned more from that brisket cook that you did, that second ever cook that you did on the web that went wrong, more from that than so many other things. Maybe not as much as maybe the Mars Griller, but I bet you learned so much from that cook. Oh, definitely, Mason. That was when I realised that the brisket, there's a reason why the brisket is like a bu the bucket list cook because it's not easy. Yeah. Um, that's why I mean... I took a step back then and I was taking my time with stuff. I was doing cooking more forgivable meats. Like I was doing pulled pork and then, I mean, I'm still shit at doing ribs. Like that's an unbunning joke with everyone on Instagram. <laughs> whenever, whenever I put up on my Instagram stories, which will cook next day amongst the people who comment ribs with loads of laughy faces after it. Beef ribs and sandwich. Yeah. Fucking love cooking beef ribs. And I know that you've said that you've nailed them. So once you, oh. once you, hit, once you hit your spot with beef ribs and you can cook them, it's um, pork ribs and really shit at. And that's the only thing that I'm like, I need to get in there and to go again because I'm just, I, I've thrown a cob on. I think I've ruined like three or four racks of baby packs at this point. I just can't get the sweet spot. But in regards to brisket and in regards to everything else, I just want to 
post it out there because, like you said, I don't want people thinking I live in a false reality where I constantly I can pick any piece of meat and I can throw it on and cook it. It's that's not life. That's helped me so many cock ups along the way. I, d- I do tell people about them all the time. In fact, I probably tell people about my failures more than my successful cooks because I find a lot of them funny. Yeah. And there's always there's always a story behind them. Like the one I was saying before, it was the second weekend, Butcher vs. Beast. It was called a banana cut, and it's from by the shin, and you're supposed to cook it low and slow. I should have known it because I had tendons in it, but I thought it was very well marbled. And just we, got, we was going to meet up here the day after, so I was cooking it. My brother come round, Laura was there, and I didn't have no backup food. It got to like <laughs> 10 o'clock at night. I cooked it hot and fast. It shrunk to about this big, and, mate, it was unbearable. It was so hard to eat, like. We just let start. We had some like garlic potatoes and sauteed veg and roasted vegetables for our tea. And we, everyone looked at me so disappointed and angry. It's a fucking good job. We went to meet up here and had loads of food the next day because I'm pretty <laughs> sure they would, have kicked, they would have kicked me out the car on the way down otherwise. But our kid was stubborn and tried to chew his way through it, but it was impossible. And that just makes me laugh. I can tell everyone that like, the look of anger on Laura's face, the look of disappointment in my own face when I look in the mirror. Why is this not The look of disappointment in my own face and then the look at our kid looking like a bulldog with a bumblebee in his mouth chewing away. <laughs> it's just so funny. So, yeah, I do like to celebrate my failures. I think it's important. Like you said, you learn so much from them. It'll be boring if you nail every cup first time around. So... If you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk. I also think that you start to learn what you can do with failures because almost all failures, there is something you can do to change or or fix it or something like, for example, you can with a tough bit of beef, you can cut it up, dice it really, really small. You could put it to one side and then chuck it into like a chili to try and get like the flavor really through it. Anything like that. If you've cooked something for, for too long and it goes dry, dice it up really, really, really small chuck it in a bolognese to bulk it out, chuck it into a chilli or something, and it will just bring that flavour through and it will possibly save some a piece of meat that you think is gone. So failures can teach you to improve your cooking in a different way. I, I'm a big advocate for leftovers anyway of barbecue if you have any food yeah. left. That's it. I think that's why I think a cast iron pot is such an important bit of equipment for any barbecue because smoke and braise is... Besides, like, hot and fast with steaks, smoke and braise is my favourite thing ever because it's near enough foolproof. You smoke it for a little bit, you get that smoky flavour in it. You throw it in a cast iron pot or in a tinfoil pan, throw some liquid in it and just let it go until it falls apart and it's, it's fucking foolproof, mate. Like, as you said, the first time I'd done beef ribs when I messed them up, I left me Kamado bottom vents a bit slow open so wind got in there, the temperature shut up. And it was so hard, and I was like, shit, what do I do? I just threw them in a pot, poured some beer in it, poured some beef stock, chopped up an onion, chopped up a carrot, put it in, and then they would fall off the bone like a couple of hours later. I was like, yeah. I don't know how I've managed to recover that. It was a complete fluke, but then I just learned that at that point, you can salvage stuff if you don't panic. Don't panic. 
Mm-hmm. Just, like you said, have a plan B, have a plan C. And if all our sales, call Uber <laughs> <laughs> always have a backup do you know that's the <laughs> thing we've said before always have a backup cook somewhere somehow even if it's i've got some chicken breasts so if this goes wrong i can cut them up stick them on a stick and just do them over the grill quickly you will be absolutely fine it's just about having that sort of backup there that you can go to we've not really mentioned it much on kind of the podcast but as long as you've got something that can save a meal you're going to be absolutely fine no matter whoever comes over because you know that if this brisket goes wrong, if these beef ribs go wrong, if these pork ribs go wrong for the 400th time for you, for example, you've got something on a <laughs> stick that you can do and feed people with. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's it. Like, when we have a group of people around, everyone's like, oh, no, you've cooked so much food there. And that, to me, like, I always cook and bring food out on platters like when and when. So we've got an island in our kitchen. So everyone will be standing around having to do it till I just come along, cut something up, there's enough for everyone to share. I'll go back outside, get something else that's ready, walk by the bands and I'll bring them in, throw them on, and I'll, I'll cook like four and five things at a time, bring it all in, everyone will sit around eating it. And everyone's like, you cook so much food. And I'm like, yeah, because if course two or three had gone wrong, you should still be leaving here with a full belly and happy. No one will talk about. We went round to Thomas for a barbecue. We fucked it up. We ended up having to chew garlic potatoes and roasted vegetables. <laughs> so it's it's a good thing to have. That's why I enjoy feeding a lot of people. I like cooking food. One of the things which I'm going to do now is it's not like a challenge, but I'm consciously making it. So I'm going to cook something where, like you said, I can do leftover meals, or I'm going to do like a big gammon joint. So I've got gammon there for food a week as well I want to buy meat that will last me I can bought a brisket point the other week and I done bit of tacos and the next day I done brisket chilli con carne first time I have ever had brisket chilli and it is fucking ruined regular chilli for me for oh it's one. ridiculous isn't it it's absolutely ridiculous I like the fact there's different textures I love the smokiness in it something i've been advocating to my friends for ages who don't barbecue even if you don't barbecue just get some stew and steak cut it up and put it in there anyway so you've got the different textures from minced beef to like chunks but if you can get that smoke running through there as well that'll blow your mind flavor wise oh you know i felt like a knobhead because i've been telling people for ages but this gets not that good it's, it's you can get beef ribs did you try did you manage to get a piece of Oh, yeah. brisket, I knew, there. I knew that's what you're going to say. The most impressive oh. thing about that brisket was it went on longer than he wanted, and you can tell, you could tell he was worried about it. It didn't rest oh. before he served it, and it was still phenomenal. It was, it would have been about 10 p.m. at night, and the place was closing at 11. He was using a barbecue he wasn't used to because of circumstances meant he couldn't cook on what the plan yeah. was. But that meat, considering it was barely rested, was phenomenal. Uh, probably the best brisket I've ever had. Not even oh, probably, e- it was. It was. Easily the best brisket I've had. And my brother was there with me, and I took a bite out of it, and I turned around and looked at our kid, and I just felt like, I felt like Scooby-Doo. I just turned around and was like, huh? Like, I could feel my whole face wobble. I was just like, and he looked at me, and I was just like, and I don't know whether he thought I'd just fallen in love with him or something. Because I was just staring my brother dead in the eye. And I was like, he's like, are you okay? And I was like, get a piece. It'll change you. <laughs> and he just like walked over and I turned around and looked at him. And he, then he shot round and looked round. And everyone who was eating it was just staring other people in the eye as if to go like, you need to go and have this now. And it was, it was insane. And do you know what? To come from someone like Dom, who's such a boss fella, he's such a laugh. He's a fucking talented lad. He knows the shit about barbecue. Only someone like him could pull off something like that way. You just, it supersedes expectations by far. So that, besides that brisket, I tell people beef ribs over brisket every day of the week. We watched um, Somebody Feed Phil in the episode where he's in Austin and mm-hmm. Laura rolls over to me and goes, I want Bria tacos as soon as you can make them. Thank you very much. And I <laughs> rolled over and went to sleep. I was like, okay, so I don't, I don't really like cooking brisket, but so I got a brisket point. 
done the bit of your tacos, which I got off um, a recipe off Woodfire Feast at Chris. He's, doesn't have, he should have five times as many followers as he's mm-hmm. got. If you don't follow him, please do. He's such a talented cook and such a boss fella. And then I met him through barbecue up north when he had a cookout and he sent me a recipe for his birria tacos and they were phenomenal. They were so good, these tacos. I loved the crispiness of them and I was like, they were good. But the chilli the next day, leftover brisket chilli was just, i never tried it before in my life and I was sitting and they're like, boom, my head had just gone. And I'm going to try and do stuff like that, get get big cuts where I'm not just cooking one meal for me and Laura. I want to get stuff where it'll sort me out for a few couple of days. That'll um, help, help me from the energy bills rising. <laughs> the other thing that I would say um, on the point of chilli, and Americans may listen to this and be screaming like, why are you saying that? Don't do that. If you've never tried it, cinnamon in a chilli just elevates it so much. Like, teaspoon of cinnamon, oh my god. Um, I can't remember who it was we were talking to on the podcast, I apologise because I should remember. Uh, it might have even been Jürgen. We we talked a bit about cinnamon and beef. You wouldn't expect it, but it just, it, it, it hits. And it works so well. Next time you do a chilli, if you've never done it before, just try putting, if you're scared, because cinnamon's quite a funny flavour. Some people love it. Oh, I love later. cinnamon. I love some cinnamon. Teaspoon. Chuck a teaspoon in. See how you get on. Oh, oh. Laura made a chilli con carne for me when we first started going out, and she put dark chocolate in it. Oh, yeah. Chocolate thought. every day. Every day. Yeah. I, I'd never done that before. I was looking, and I was like, this bitch's head fell off. I know she's a fucking baker, but why is she putting chocolate in me chilli? And I ate it, and it was like, Oh my god, that makes such a difference. It's it just adds that richness to it. And so now chocolate and now cinnamon. And before an hour, I'm going to be fucking throwing the ingredients to a donut in my chili, and it's going to change my health. Oh, I'm awful. I like I like experimenting so much, and it's I mean like my chili because you can put so many different things and take so many different things out of chili. I love putting marmite or yeast extract or vegemite, depending where you are, in there teaspoon of that will give you a really big yeast hit as well particularly if you put on early on and cook it down for hours and hours and hours let's be honest it's not a chili if it hasn't cooked for at least four hours don't pretend it is it's not um i, I do that i love the dark chocolate i absolutely love the cinnamon as well it's just it's just a flavor playground isn't it frankly it is it's an easy one to experiment with isn't it the other thing as well is for children if you're making a chilli that you want adults to enjoy as well as children, I don't put kidney beans in. I'll put a tin of baked beans in at the end instead because I know the kids will eat that. I know the kids will eat that and not turn their nose up at it, particularly the young ones who are like five or six. Do you know what I mean? Baked beans in your chilli, that's well. I don't get why everyone, loads of people are put off by kidney beans, aren't they? It's a, it's a strange one. I think it's the word, it's... and if you're short, kidney and that colour of bean doesn't go <laughs> for children for some reason. Whereas they love baked beans. And, you know, it's, yeah. I'd much prefer to have, like, a kidney bean in there for the flavour profile from an adult point of view. But you can put that in there, and it just it means that children can have an adult chilli and still enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When we were when we were, I say kids, when I was in my teenage years, I used to pick onions and peppers out of everything. Someone on my step, when my stepmom used to make us chili, she had to put uh, like spaghetti bolognese. She had to blend the sauce down and mix it with the mint. And now I just cringe at myself so much for doing that. Like I was such a, I was such a pussy bastard when I was a kid. I'd sit there with a the fork just flicking onions and everything out. And now I think I had chopped onions to everything that I cook. Yeah. <laughs> It's the base flavour, isn't it? Anything you're cooking, uh, onions. At some level, on, there's onions involved. Onions and six cloves of garlic, and then um, <laughs> I can just make anything from that. I'm, I'm, it'll be the weirdest bacon on toast, but I can make one with onions and six cloves of garlic. You put out so much different content on there. I've only just realised we've not talked about the gravel pit at all. Ah, uh, yeah. See, I love doing a gravel pit. It's just... Wedding cake season, I had to put a stop to it because I didn't have an hour in the day. So um, the gravel pit was just, it was almost the build up to Sizzle Fest was coming. I was feeling not anxious, I was feeling a bit nervous about meeting people who I'd been speaking to online, like would I get mm-hmm. on with them in person and know how loud and 
I'll like you can boost your in person so they might not get on with me there so I was like I'd like to meet them face to face beforehand but there's no way of me doing that there's not many people up here in, around Liverpool with a governor or anything so I was like how can they do it and I was like do you know what I just have people on Instagram live and I'll do that and obviously my name Smokeface Gorilla is a nod to the Wu-Tang clan because Ghostface Killers are rapping in Wu-Tang and when we had the fire, the only thing that made people smile was there's a selfie of me while I'm in hospital. We just smoke covered all over my face and that picture like with a little bit of light in it on a dark day. So I was like, ah, I'm smoke face. So I was like, smoke face together. And Wu Tang's like, I was like, people should come round to your, your, bar, your, your barbecue pit. So I was like, I'll just call it the gravel pit and I'll have loads of fun with it. And it was boss. I had so much fun. Got talking to people who spoke to all the time on Instagram. I had like I had a lot of people you've had on it. I had Dan on it. I've had jo- John Wilson was another one on it. Stewie was on it. I had all the lads from Stake or Break. Butcher Farrell was on the last one. I am definitely going to bring that back because it's class just sitting there talking shit for an hour. <laughs> it's about getting the timings right as well because so many people are busy when it comes to the summer, but over the autumn and winter, you'll have the opportunity to do more of those sorts of things, depending on how busy you are with the day job, of course, as well. <laughs> But that's it, it's just wedding seat, wedding cake season, mate. Like, Laura has been so busy over the summer, and in turn, I've been so busy because I bake for her, and obviously dealing with the little one, there wasn't really a time where I could have an hour when people were, because most people are like, Friday night's good for me, or well, Saturday's our busiest day, so Friday night, we're prepping for Saturday, so yeah. it really wasn't working out, but now everything's slowing down, I'm going to do it a bit more, and Get a few people on. I have to get you and Owen on. And love to, absolutely love to. I, I know Owen would enjoy that as well. Yeah, and then another thing, just to add a bit of fun to it, everyone who comes on gives me free songs to add to a playlist, and that's the playlist that I listen to when a barbecue. I put that. Oh, you'd, you'd enjoy that. Owen and I have very different tastes in music. I was brought up by uh, mum and dad, who between them would be interested in everything from Black Sabbath to the Commodores, to the Beatles, to Dire Straits, to Meatloaf, to Metallica, <laughs> and like huge broad spectrum. So my taste in music is very, and then when I was getting older and going through teenage years, I was into like emo and kind of that sort of metal sort of yeah. music. Whereas, Everyone's at the emo metal yeah, stage. Of course. <laughs> Where, whereas Owen is very much 90s rap and easy listening. It's just those two things. <laughs> if Ludacris did like a um, joint project with the Lighthouse family, that's Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Th- those two things would just be Owen. So uh, we'd love to do that. And I think it would possibly mess about with your um, playlist, though, a little bit. <laughs> um, it's, it's one minute I'll be cooking to NWA, and then the next minute, like Jolene will come on. And that's just, they're just two of John Wilson's picks. And then it is, it's boss. You get like some people they try and they, they go for the cooler option, like the you go for the one that'll fit it with the playlist well. But I love it when you get a mad obscure one and like like yourself, I've got the crazy I've got a crazy range in music that I love listening to. I I think I'm the only scouser who doesn't listen to the Beatles. Laura <laughs> is obsessed with the Beatles, but I d I don't listen to the Beatles. I love Metallica and I love rap music. I love pop music, Michael Jackson, and I just wanted that. I wanted to get a big, massive oil and pot of different music for me to play while I'm outside barbecue. And a lot of the times, there's a few songs on there that make me chuckle as I'm cooking. So, why yes, not? That, that's, eh? like, that's one of the things. So, loads of, and what's possible about that is loads of people have like put on the stories that they're listening to the playlist as well, which is quite sick. So, other people get to play along and enjoy it it's that point isn't it we're going back to it time and time again it's about enjoying what we're doing and enjoying barbecue because it is a, it's a celebration of food it's a gathering of people even if it's i'm cooking for myself at home for my family they're getting together and then you're posting it on instagram and things so that side of things also gets together but it's just about enjoying the food even if you cock it up at the end of the day um talk but about enjoy challenge. the Go on. Enjoy the process. Enjoy yeah. the process and the results speak for themselves. 
exactly. And on that point of challenges and things, are you ready for a bit of barbecue bingo? Let's go. Let's go, shall we? <clears throat> so, let's do this. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Perfect. So for anyone who doesn't know, maybe you're a first-time listener. If so, welcome. I'd be surprised if this is the first episode you got into, but welcome. Um, what we like to do each um, episode is we like to put a challenge out there to um, our guests. So we have a roulette wheel with a number of different ingredients on. And the idea is that we'll click it, it'll spin round, give you a random ingredient, and then we ask you to cook something with it. Um, and then tag us, hashtag barbecue bingo, tag us in, put it on social media and show people what you're able to do when it's literally up to the barbecue gods. We have put a twist on it this year. So we're asking every single guest that we have to leave their stamp on the wheel. So we'll spin the wheel. Whatever you land on, we'll take off an ingredient and then we'll put on an ingredient of your choice for the next guest to possibly come to. So you can either be really kind or you can be horrible to a certain extent or make them experiment. So uh, I'll be nice. <laughs> um, having a look on there, one of the things we also have is my signature dish, which we say to people, look, what are you known for? And you've just banged on about steaks. So if that comes up, you're going to have to do something special with a steak, which I don't think you're going to argue with me there. That is your signature dish, to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only one that I can really think of. So a steak <laughs> the size of my head, we'll go for is there anything on there that would scare you at all or you're allergic to because we've had that before as well no i absolutely hate mushrooms but i can't see mushrooms anywhere um no um one of the things that you might not be able to see clearly is something that dave from spice punch put on there is maple and pecan ice cream so you don't have to necessarily make that on a barbecue but you could pair it with something that you're cooking or even use it as an ingredient do you know what I want to try desserts again, so I'll go for that. I really want Chevron pepper is another one, and is that whiskey? They're the three that I want. Yeah. So the ice cream, Chevron pepper, and whiskey. Well, I'm going to click this. I'm hoping for. I'll click it and we'll spin it, and I guarantee it'll end up on chocolate buttons now. But let's find out, no. shall we? <laughs> At least I've got a good chili recipe with cinnamon and chocolate buttons on. Okay, I thought it was going to land on ice cream for a second, but we're oh. on duck. Ooh. Do I? I have never cooked a whole duck on a barbecue, so wow. I'm going to go for that. I'm so pleased that that has come up then, because there's, yeah. there's so much you could do with a whole duck as well. Because if you really wanted to, you could cook the whole duck, and then you could cut up and do different things. You could do something with the legs if you wanted. You could do something with the breasts. You could you could make tacos out of it. There's so much that you could do there. So no, I'm, I'm going to have fun with that one. I'm going to have fun. All you need to do, when you get round to it, if it takes a week, it takes a week. If it takes two months, it takes two months. When you get the time, do it, tag us in, have fun with it. That, that's all we yeah. want to do at the end of the day. For sure. That's it. I'm happy with that one. I have removed duck. What would you like us to put on this magnificent wheel? Miso. Miso. Oh, a bit of fermentation paste. Why not? I love that. Just a umami that you get when you marinate something with it or you have a ramen with a bit of meat so in it it's super so it's not an ingredient many people use on the barbecue as well so hopefully whoever it falls on that it's someone who doesn't use it and you start using it and it opens the mind yeah it, it is you're right it's not something that the average person even looks into in the uk and i don't know why because it it offers so much flavor in different ways it's a great thing to cook with and there's a lot you can do with it so I really hope that someone who is entrenched in obsession with American style barbecue gets something like that and has to think on their feet to play with. That'll be sick. That'll be really cool. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great ingredient. You know, we've talked about so many things and I'm conscious of the fact that we're getting towards the end of the episode now. Is there anything that, uh, that we haven't talked about that either you want to talk about or you think should be talked about from like a barbecue either community or just barbecuing in general point of view um one of the things that's quite close to me and my family is we were close with the charity and this sunday i'm selling barbecue chase in liverpool to raise money for them they're called the home foundation a lot of people from the barbecue 
community helped me out. We done a raffle for them at the beginning of the year. Got AJ Foody, Twisted Ribs, John Wilson, and Jay from Alton's give up a give up a barbecue for it. So many people don't need to prize us and bought tickets to this raffle and we ended up raising seven over seven thousand pounds for the charity of the raffle and the barbecue community come on board with it bigger than I ever hoped for and it kind of introduced the people who know the charity to the barbecue community as well. So that's one way oh, I'm trying to get barbecue, not well known, everyone knows barbecue, but the community more and helping charity in the same sense. And I see it quite a lot. The queue together lads do it amazingly. So um, is it is it Riverside of Town who's just done like a big uh, big walk somewhere, like a marathon walk and they have loads of people for Alzheimer's. I just think it's a boss way to kill two birds with one stone to help a charity and to promote the barbecue community because we're also supporters of each other. Let's support each other in support and those who are more in need. And I think now, especially the state of this country, morale is ridiculously low, particularly mm-hmm. particularly for people who are less fortunate, people who are concerned. So I just want people to be a bit mindful of that. And if there's an opportunity for you to help others, don't be scared to put it out there on Instagram. The barbecue community is so sick when it comes to rallying behind the fellow members. We all rally behind and we all are out and then that way we're showing people who aren't part of the community what the community is. I think it's a boss way and it's a it's a way that isn't complicated to promote the community and to support those who need it. So I've we're really this charity is close to our heart, so we help them out quite a lot and through that more people have followed me on it. They were voting in the competitions like the stake or break. And the families have got to see it and then you're educating them about the barbecue and they wouldn't have been interested a year ago until they had seen that. So I just want people to know that if you ever feel like you do want to do something like that, I'll always be there to support you and help you in helping others. And it's just class to see that there are people out there like your AJ Foodie, Twisted Ribs, John Wilson, and Nick, who lives in Norfolk, who he bought on the he bought a load of the prizes out as well and um, so many people out there who are willing to help it's class to see so i just want to thank everyone in the community who has helped me out through all the stuff that i've done there like with this one butcher farrow's donated all the meat for the taco trays that i'm selling wayne from we love produce has donated everything else he's just messaged me saying make sure you're part of them so you don't underestimate how much stuff we've got for you here so i just want to thank everyone for supporting me when i've been doing that charity work and I want to tell others to do it as well. It's not just about posting a page on your Instagram. If you can help other people that's fortunate at the same time, it's a, it's, it's a good way to get the barbecue community out there and get everyone to know us. You're right. And it's it's not just the UK either. It's, it's At the moment, no matter where you are, big stories about interest rates going up in the US. You know, there's, there's problems everywhere. Everyone has, is feeling battered and bruised over the last two and a half three four years i mean you can go back further depending on where you are in the world to be fair and if you have the opportunity or the time to support your fellow person why not do it it's a great thing to do it'll make you feel good it'll put a smile on other people's faces and most importantly it'll make a difference to other people and you know, it, great if it also helps kind of the community get together. But at the end of the day, we're all people. And if we can help each other, why not do it? It's a great thing that you're doing and championing there. So let's all do it. That's it, man. Definitely. And I just want to say thank you for taking the time to speak to me today. And also give one more shout out for yourself. Where are you? How can people find you? So thank you, first of all. Thank you for having me. I am... Um... Thomas, I'm at Smokefaced Gorilla on Instagram and I'm on TikTok as well now, which is mad, but mostly on Instagram. So follow me there, follow me on TikTok. I'm dead engaging, so feel free to give me a message, take part in the little question and answer things that I do. Yeah, give us a follow and give a little get to know each other and shit like that. Let's all support each other. I love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. I'm sure we'll talk to you again. Thank you so much, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye now.
Cheers, man. Bye. So that's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. A huge thank you for um, Tom uh, from the Smoke Face Griller for spending time to speak to me and also being so open and talking about some of the difficulties that he's had over the last few years and how barbecues really helped him grow and get over some of those issues. Um, we're a big advocates of mental health here on the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast and supporting each other. And it's fantastic to see that sort of results that us as a community working together can do to help everyone. Um, if you'd like to know more about us as a podcast, Podcast. you can google us find our website um, we're also all over the social medias so you can find us that way please do like and subscribe to the podcast we also now have a shop on our website too where you can buy different bits and pieces um, you can get some merch you can look at some bits and pieces from thermopen as well so it's definitely worth uh, checking that out also go have a look at our youtube channel as well not only do we have the video versions of this podcast on there we also have some other bits and pieces and videos on there too you can also go onto the site and do buy us a coffee which just helps us put together the podcast as a whole as it does take a bit of time for us to do and we just want to put the best content together for you so any donations that go in through that way we will put back into the podcast and we also want to be doing more charitable stuff as well as tom has mentioned on the episode but until next time keep on grilling Today's episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast is brought to you by AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.